In the previous episode, we talked about running our queue worker in our terminal while we are developing. However, the question did arise fairly quickly from one of you asking, well, how do I run that in the background? I don't want to have to run that in the foreground. So we're going to do a quick lesson today just to show you how we can put that in the background and still maintain our output and being able to log that to a file. So let's start off right where we left in the previous lesson. We were running PHP artisan Q work. And of course, that stays right there. As you can tell, it is just waiting for a job to come in. Let's give it a job. Let's go to Chrome, add a new customer, give it an email, add customer. And sure enough, we are processing our job. We know our job takes roughly about 10 seconds because we're using that sleep timer on it. And there we go. All right, so our job processed. We head back and we have our email. All right, so everything is working exactly as expected. I'm gonna hit Control C to exit out of that process. And to put that command in the background, it's actually quite simple. All you have to do is add an ampersand at the end. So exactly the same command, except at the end, you set space and then ampersand. And when you run that, you see that now we have our prompt back and we have this five digit here. This is called a process ID, right? So this is process ID 29008. You don't really have to remember that. I'll show you how to look that up later on. Now, right now, that is running. It is listening for jobs to come in. And to prove that, we can run jobs. And we see here, we have a process that is running and the process running is PHP Artisan Q work. So let's add another customer. Any user will do, test at test, add customer. All right, and there we go. Sure enough, that process is running. Now let's go ahead and run jobs again. And we see that we have that running, but we don't get that process ID. To get that, we need to run jobs and pass in the flag of L. And that gives us our process ID. So when you wanna kill this process, just like that, you type in kill, and then you need to give it the process ID. In our case, 29008, and that ends the process. Notice it says done, and at that point, it is done with that process. If we run jobs again, that's empty, there's nothing there. And of course, if we were to give it a new job, it doesn't work. All right. Now at this stage, we've lost the ability to see what things have processed and what kind of errors we are getting. So to add to that, what we could do is call the same command again. So that is PHP artisan Q work. But before the ampersand, we could put a greater than sign, which basically pipes whatever comes out of that command into another place. And the place that we're going to put it at is storage logs. There's a directory specifically for logs that comes in with Laravel. And let's just call it jobs.log. Run that again. All right. So we have that running in the background. Let's give it a new job, a new customer, one more time. And that's running. And now let's switch back to PHP Storm. And if we go into storage logs, we have this new jobs.log. And if we open that file, we see that same exact output that we were getting in the terminal, but now we're getting it in a file. And of course, we are running. If we go back over here, we do have our new email that popped in. So now we have a place, a log, for all of our files to go into. And that's pretty cool. Now, one thing about this is that if that process was to fail, nothing really happens. I mean, the jobs stop running and everything gets backed up. So you need something else, right? You need supervisor. Supervisor is another piece of software that is beyond the scope of this course, but you could do some Google searches and find some stuff on how to set up supervisor. And what supervisor will do is if this process stops running for any reason, it will restart it for you and get it running again. That way your jobs don't get backed up. So that's more like what you would do in a production situation. However, for development, this is perfectly fine because you can always run this jobs with the flag of L and you know if your process is still running. If that process fails, you can simply boot it back up by yourself. So let me go ahead and kill that process again. So that's 29,750. 
and now we're no longer processing jobs. So with that, now you know how to be able to run that queue work in the background. That way you could get your terminal prompt back up. Now typically in development, like we talked about, you wouldn't really do this. You'd kind of just leave a tab there open for you. You don't really need to run this in the background, but you can. There's really no reason to do one over the other. They're both basically the same in your development environment. So that wraps it up for this lesson. If you didn't catch the previous episode, episode 29, catch that one. That is all about how we set up our queues and how we refactor our code to queued a 10 second long process. That way the user doesn't have to wait. So if that interests you, go ahead and check out episode 29.